Breaking news from WRAL. Coverage you can count on. Right now at 6, one person was shot at a gas station in Harnett County. What we know about the multiple shooters and the incident that started miles away. And just getting hotter this week, the heat index will be at triple digits as the kids get off the bus this afternoon. And a woman is hurt after a late night shooting at a Raleigh apartment complex. What we've learned about the extent of her injuries. Plus, it is the first day of class for thousands of students at Wake County Schools. We have team coverage for you this morning throughout the county and monitoring the roads and weather from right here in the studio for you. And if this is part of your new routine to get school started, thanks for including us. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Renee Chu. The Dummy Real Pet Squad is here <laughs> to get you ready for this Let's first go. day of school. That's right. <laughs> Kids, teachers, and parents, you've got this. Let's do this. Yes, this is a great start here. And if you're headed out to the bus stop, that first day gear, the attire you've put together, you'll be plenty warm. Elizabeth Gardner in the WRS Severe Weather Center right now getting kids off to school. Oh boy, you know, <laughs> here we go. It's going to be quite the school year, especially starting off with this heat. Again, this is a live look at Zebulon. The town hall here, 71 is our temperature. So that's a good bit warmer than this time yesterday, but our dew point is actually feeling okay. The dew point is the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. So 65 actually brings us back to nice. Now, so that will keep us from feeling quite as hot, but we will see that heat really building over the next couple of days. Also, watch out in our southern counties for some patchy fog. That's really the only thing that you could run into this morning weather-wise that could impact your travel to work or school. We have 10-mile visibility in the triangle, but it did drop to a half a mile in Clinton. Um, we would be looking at a quarter of a mile to signify some fog around the area. Our temperature in southern pines and rocks are feeling pretty comfortable in the low to mid-60s, but we are looking at 71 in Durham and Raleigh and 70 in Fayetteville as you head out the door. In some cases, temperature are almost 10 degrees warmer than they were this time yesterday, so do keep that in mind. Hour by hour, heat index again, climbing up to 100 about the time the kids get off the bus with actual temperatures in the mid-90s. Coming up, we'll be looking at the potential for some record highs. I'll show you when, Ken. At 6.01, Elizabeth, happening now in the WR Traffic Center, we just got reports of Raleigh police working a hit-and-run crash in southeast Raleigh. It's on Sanford Road at Creech Road. We wanted to bring it to your attention just in case uh, you're getting ready to head to school. Southeast Raleigh High School is in this vicinity. Right now, we're not picking up any problems right there on Sanderson Road or Creech Road, but just look for some police activity if you happen to be in that neck of the woods. Uh, really a quiet start to your morning commute this morning, which is good news. All the major roads are delay-free at this hour. Ken, thanks. Breaking news, deputies have been at a gas station for nearly seven hours after a man was shot several times. The investigation is underway at a Circle K gas station in Harnett County. Nick Perlin is there in the WRL Breaking News Tracker. Nick, you've learned new information within the last half hour. Renee, yes, we've learned that the person who was shot was shot multiple times and is in the hospital and in critical condition. But we're also learning that Harnett County deputies are searching for multiple shooting shooters this morning. Now, I want to get you to some video from the WRL breaking news tracker so I can show you some of the damage that was left behind here. And you can see the glass front door here of the Circle K is shattered here after a bullet presumably hit it. And you can also see deputies searching through this black car. Now, I will say about two minutes ago, the crime scene behind me has just cleared, but we did learn from deputies that this incident happened in Sanford City about 15 minutes away, and at some point, the shooters ended up here on this Circle K on US 421 near Broadway Road in Harnett County, and that's when they opened fire, striking one person multiple times. We do know no customers or employees were hurt when this shooting happened, but again, at this point in time, we're still trying to get an update on how that person is doing, again, in critical condition and we're also trying to find out from deputies if they have any leads this morning on who these suspected shooters are. As more information becomes available, we'll let you know. Live in Harnett County, Nick Perlin, WRL News. A woman is hurt after shooting at an apartment complex in Raleigh. The WRL breaking news tracker was on Glasscock Street in East Raleigh while police investigated last night. Police say the woman who was hurt is expected to recover. So far, no arrests. Today, thousands of students are waking up early to head back to school in Wake County. All morning long, we have you covered as your back to school headquarters with team coverage. We're tracking school buses from the Wake County Bus Depot and monitoring their progress. 
First, though, WRL's Laura Levine joins us live from Green Magnet Elementary School with Wake County Schools Superintendent. Laura, good morning. Hey, good morning. Yes, yeah, Superintendent Robert Taylor with us now. We know he's among one of many people who will be welcoming the students back. We thank you for joining us. Absolutely. It's my pleasure to be here, and I'm excited about this return for our traditional students. Absolutely. So, Dr. Taylor, we know you wrapped up your first 100 days on the job back in January, and you said that the district has room to really improve some of the opportunities at really accomplishing a lot of different things. What are some of the lessons learned that you plan to take in this new school year? I think uh, the, the best lesson I learned was to be able to listen to parents and listen to students and know what their wishes and desires are. And as parents, they want to continue to see their students achieve. And we know there's a lot of work that we've got to do to close the, uh, uh, the achievement gap between our black and brown students and our other students. Uh, and so our whole work this year is about academic achievement and focusing on curriculum and instruction. Safety, top of mind for a lot of parents, whether it be inside the classroom or at Wake County school events. How, are, how do you plan to tackle some of the issues that we may face this year? Well, we want to continue the work that we've been doing. You know, we have a clear book bag policy when people enter events. Uh, certainly parents have uh, the opportunity to check in and use our system there that does background checks. Uh, but I encourage everybody to know that safety is really about human behavior and making sure that we follow the rules that are put in place. Those are the things that are going to keep us safe. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. And we'll have some more conversations here with Dr. Taylor with our next interview coming up at 6.30. Laura Levine, WRL News, live in Raleigh. Our team coverage continues with WRL's Kelsey Coffey, live at the bus depot on Rock Quarry Road. Kelsey, as those buses roll out, a new app lets parents track their children's buses. Renee, exactly. So some of those buses have already headed out now. The lot is starting to clear and good news for students and families this year. Every route is covered, but it's normal to have a few delays on the first day. Right now, the district has 578 drivers. That's up from 560 drivers the same time last year. So the school system is seeing some improvement, but there are at least 10 drivers short of their uh, ideal staff numbers. New this school year, there will be a new bus delay notification system. Parents can now receive texts and emails about bus delays. You can also still go on the district's website for updates. So we'll be monitoring delays throughout the morning to make sure that you stay up to date. And so far, there's been no delays. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. We have you covered this morning in all things traffic related. WRL's Brett Neese is at the bus lot at West Middlebrook Middle School where buses will be hitting the road soon. And Brett, you'll be checking out any bus issues that might come up today. Yeah, that's right, Renee, and of course we have Ken Smith in the traffic center. He'll be looking at the traffic map and using all of our different traffic cameras to make sure that uh, you can get to school, get to work on time today here at West Millbrook Middle. You can see all the buses here behind me lined up. A few of them have their lights flashing as they go through their morning tests before they get out on the road. A couple of them have already left the lot here at West Millbrook, and uh, they are out there getting those uh, kids picked up here for this first day of school, if any traffic issues issues arise, we're going to go and check all of those out. We do have a number of different uh, schools that we have on our list that uh, may or may not have certain types of issues that they see uh, throughout the, the school year, some that have seen issues in the past, and maybe there might be some new issues. If you see any issues out there uh, at your child's school, definitely give us a, a call at our uh, in our newsroom. Give us a tip in our email line on our reported submissions online. We're going to check out all the traffic issues from the ground, breaking news tracker style here this morning. Live in Raleigh, Brittany, WRL News. Today will be the first day of school for students in Person County after a two-week delay because of mold in schools. Earlier this month, school leaders discovered mold at Person County High School, South Elementary School, and Oak Lane Elementary School. They say it's likely happening because of construction and because air conditioning was being cut off during nights and weekends. The district set aside $700,000 to address the problem at the high school alone. This morning, students at St. Augustine's University will begin to move on to campus ahead of the delayed start to the fall semester. Classes were originally scheduled to start on August 19th. Earlier this month, St. Aug President Marcus Burgess said the university needed more time to make maintenance upgrades to dorms and classrooms. He also said St. Aug was working to finalize funding to pay overdue student refunds and staff salaries from last semester. A driver is in the hospital this morning with life-threatening injuries after this crash on Highway 55, a fiery accident. It also killed another driver. This happened around 1 yesterday afternoon near the Triangle Expressway on-ramp. 
That ramp was closed for hours after this crash. You can share your thoughts today about the need for more affordable housing in Lee County. The county's S3 Housing Advocacy Action Group is hosting a meeting tonight at 6 at Mana Church on Burns Drive in Sanford. Experts will talk with community members about housing needs and strategies. This is the last of four scheduled public meetings on the topic. Violent messages painted on the Chapel Hill Courthouse. Police are looking for the people who spray painted that graffiti after a weekend protest. And a child in North Carolina is OK this morning after a book caught fire in the car they were riding and we'll tell you what happened. And we are in for a hot day today for back to school. Elizabeth. We are. We're getting close to record highs again. I'll show you what the heat index will really make it feel like today coming up. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. And even though we are looking at an extremely hot afternoon today in the next several days, it's on the more comfortable side again this morning. We take a live look at downtown Raleigh. We're looking at mostly clear skies for today. Temperatures are uh, in the 60s in some places at 64 in Lewisburg and Southern Pines. It's 68 in South Hill as well as Rocky Mountain Wilson. Tarboro's at 73. Fayetteville's at 70 right now. But our dew point, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere or humidity is actually on the lower side this morning. Now that may change this afternoon. Temperatures are going to climb into the mid 90s, we will be close to record highs. We are likely to see that heat index really climbing by Thursday. We're also going to transition to a wetter pattern. So thinking about sending kids out the door, they don't need their umbrellas today, but they may by Thursday, Ken. Elizabeth, weather and traffic every 10 minutes to make sure you're informed so you can make informed decisions as you get ready to head out this morning. We're just monitoring a crash that we've just heard about in Southeast Raleigh this morning. It's a hit and run crash on Sanded Food Road at Creech Road. This is down around Southeast Raleigh High School, just in case you're getting ready to head out that way. Want to make sure that you know that really we're not seeing any problems on our sensors this morning. Elsewhere around the Triangle and uh, Gray County communities, all the major routes are delay free at this hour. And of course, we're able to have another update in about 10 minutes. Sounds good, Ken. We have an update for you. Remember that U.S. soldier who crossed into North Korea last year? He will plead guilty to desertion. The attorneys for Travis King say he will plead guilty to five of the 14 charges he's facing. Nine other offenses, including possession of sexual images of a child, will be withdrawn and dismissed under the terms of the deal. His plea and sentencing hearing will take place next month at a military base in Texas. King was in South Korea as part of a unit rotation when he crossed into North Korea. Chapel Hill police are looking for vandals who spray painted the town courthouse over the weekend. Now that's behind some pretty violent messages. The Orange County D.A. called them despicable. The graffiti appeared after dozens of pro-Palestinian protesters held a rally in Peace and Justice Plaza. So far, no arrests have been made. A child in Burke County, North Carolina, is OK this morning after a children's book caught fire inside the car they were in. W Royals Michelle McConaughey is here now with how this happened. Michelle. Yeah, Renee, this was really scary. The book had a lithium battery in it. It overheated and started a fire inside the car. Look at the car seat we're about to show you. Luckily, the child wasn't hurt when that fire started, but the fire department posted these photos. This is what's left of the child's safety seat. Investigators say the book was placed between the child's seat and the van seat. They believe it was the small lithium battery that possibly overheated and started that fire. The world itself is moving toward lithium batteries, which propose some new troubles to the fire service. Uh, you know, I don't know that they're, other than trying to keep them cool, I don't really know that there is any precautions. And firefighters estimate the damages to the interior of that minivan in the thousands of dollars. So far, there's been no comment from the company that makes that book, and the fire department is keeping the car seat for training purposes. Thanks, Michelle. Here's a warning before you grab some juice to go with your breakfast. Walmart has recalled nearly 10,000 cases of apple juice because they were found to contain potentially harmful levels of inorganic arsenic. The great value brand apple juice recall received a more urgent classification Friday after its original announcement August 15th. North Carolina is one of the affected states, but so far there are no reports of illness. 
Good morning, Chris Lovingood here on the WRL Live Center getting a look at your economic news this morning. CNBC has a headline here. Stock futures little changed after the Dow's record close yesterday, which is a little surprising there. But obviously, a lot of people are still waiting to hear if there's actually going to be a rate cut, although the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, says that it is imminent cuts are that is uh, in terms of futures this morning. This is what we're talking about little change. Dow Jones down 43 S&P down four. But these were actually green maybe five minutes ago. So right now it's currently in the red for that in that regard. But things are kind of changing this morning. But keep in mind, at 10 o'clock this morning, the Consumer Confidence uh, Report is slated out. That's from the conference board. Basically, it kind of is a survey of consumer attitudes, spending plans, and expectations of inflation, stock prices, and interest rates. Uh, if anything significant comes out of that, we'll report it here on WRL News. We know you will. Chris, thank you. Crews say a sewage spill at a Wake County Parks Pond was caused by kitchen grease. The pond at Joyner Park in Wake Forest and the nearby trail were closed to the public on Friday. Raleigh Water says cleanup efforts in and around the pond are expected to continue for the next few days. They do not know when the pond and the trail will reopen at this time. 617 is the time we give you this live look in Durham right now this morning. Sunrise on the way right there. The Bulls are back in town with a homestand. First day of school, I'm going to take my walk to the bus stop here and <laughs> drop myself off Elizabeth Gardner in the WRL Severe Weather Center right here. It will be warm this morning, warmer later for drive, for pickup, right? You're going to need to take that jacket off. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you, uh, when you head home from school today or from work, for that matter, because we are definitely looking at a big warm-up over the, over the next several days. We take a live look at downtown Raleigh. We're looking at mostly sunny skies. A little bit of cloud cover there on the horizon. You might, in some parts of the viewing area, especially our southern counties, run into a deck of low clouds this morning, maybe even a little bit of fog. So that's the only issue that we see for folks heading out the door to school and work this morning. This high pressure system has brought dry conditions for us for the last uh, week or so, as well as a flow out of the north, which has brought us lovely conditions. As it moves eastward, this flow clockwise around it, of course, for us, shifts to southwesterly, and that's going to bring in more heat and humidity. We also have a series of fronts that's up to the north and west. Gradually, that starts to move, and that high pressure system has been blocked blocking all the precipitation up to our north and west. Um, now we're going to see that pattern breaking down. So by lunchtime on Thursday, there may be some showers near the Virginia line and then into the mid to late afternoon, we'll see that settling down across our area. And we do have the potential Thursday to have some scattered storms that could be severe. We have a level one risk on Thursday. Those will likely taper off once we get past sunset. But with that front in our vicinity, we'll continue a chance of thunderstorms Friday and for much of the weekend. This is a look at our severe weather threat for Thursday. It's a level one risk, and we'll be watching for that risk as we get through the holiday weekend. Biggest threat Thursday would be wind damage. Still going to stay on the hot side, especially the first part of the holiday weekend. will be in the low 90s. The humidity stays high, and again, with that front nearby, we'll continue with that chance of showers and thunderstorms. Also, looking at our tropical outlook, the next seven days, just a 20% chance that this system could develop there in the tropics. But as we get through the next couple of weeks, certainly it's a good chance, 60-plus, that we get another system that will develop this time of the year is the peak of the season all the way through October 10th. This is when we see 70% of the major hurricanes that we'll see in a season during this time period. So we'll be watching it very closely. The big story, of course, for the next several days, especially Thursday, our humidity goes up. We'll see a high of 98 and we could see a heat index as high as 107. That could put us under a heat advisory. So we'll be watching that. And again, also that potential for thunderstorms as we get into holiday weekend, especially in the afternoons and evenings. And would you know the weekend here comes the storms, right? right? All yeah. right, Elizabeth, thanks. Well, you are experiencing a quiet start to your morning commute this morning. We do have one thing to tell you about this morning. It's a hit-and-run crash on Sandiford Road in uh, at Creech Road. This is in the Southeast Swally community. Uh, you, we're not picking up any sensors, any problems on our sensors this morning. But if you're heading to Southeast Swally High School this morning, I thought you should know about that. But again, it's not causing any problems for you this morning. Elsewhere around the Triangle and surrounding communities, we're not seeing any major problems whatsoever. Let's take a quick uh, spin around the Beltline. There's I-440 and Capitol Boulevard and uh, in the south side of the Beltline, I-40 and South Saunders Street. Traffic moving nicely in both directions. Ken, thanks. It's 621. When your kids return to class, the last thing they should have to worry about is if there will be air conditioning. And the update we're expecting today about Wake County's HVAC systems after several schools had to cancel class because of problems. Also, guns and drugs off Durham streets after police arrested 18 people. How the city's police chief hopes this affects crime trends for the better in the future. Here's a look at the winning North Carolina education lottery numbers. Don't go away. We have What's Trending coming up.
This What's Trending report, sponsored by Rug and Home. Back to school week, and that means our social media feeds will be chock full of those cute little first day of school pictures. <laughs> we wanted to share our own cute, I don't know, Ken Smith here now with What's Trending. Yeah, let's start with a seven-year-old Ken Smith. Aww, yeah, so yeah. cute. Oh, to the second grade in Tortola in the British Virgin Islands. Uh, somebody needed to tell me to smile. That's, that's all I needed to know about that. <laughs> I yeah. think it's adorable. Right? Very cute. Yeah. And who's uh -oh. this little one? Uh -oh. Michelle McConaughey on her first state of school in the first grade. Aw, such a cute outfit. So cute. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, and this is eighth oh, grade yes. Renee. A lot going on. Had the perm, had the braces. I took my glasses off for the picture. <laughs> yeah, middle school was tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you survived. I'm going to drop it back a grade there. <laughs> Seventh grade. <laughs> yes. Yep, Jeff Travolta. <laughs> Staying alive. <laughs> Staying alive there. Oh, oh Jeff, boy. that was quite the look. You know yeah. what? That was the 70s, you know? Yeah. Late, late 70s, it kind of fit the whole deal. You were <laughs> in style, my friend. And of course, you can see all these pictures, begrudgingly, on WRL.com. <laughs> Trying to keep, you know. Just see keeping, if you can recognize up with those rascals. Yeah. 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 <laughs> keeping up with the style these days, you know. Ken, thanks for that. Look <laughs> down memory lane there. <laughs> Caitlin Clark, meantime, adding to her records, impressive as they are, rookie season in the NBA, WNBA. She made four three-pointers in the Indiana Fever's win last night over the Atlanta Dream, so that gives her 85 three-pointers on the season. That ties a WNBA record for a rookie. Still 10 more games left in the season for Clark to add to that total. <laughs> And of course, the heat is on as we get through this week. We're going to see highs this afternoon in the mid to upper 90s, and it'll be a warm night tonight. I'll show you when we could get hot enough for a heat advisory coming up. And a new school year means new bus routes coming up. How we're monitoring bus delays before your student heads off to school.